All right, let's take you to the Western Cape now, where a peace deal has been reached between two warring taxi associations following deadly violence in Cape Town. Transport Minister Fikile Mbalula will be assessing trains operating on the B97 route that the associations were in fact fighting over. News from Africa's Atim Togana joins us now live from the railway line. Ati, a, a long time coming, uh, this sort of truce that's been reached by warring taxi associations. What's Fikile Mbalula hoping to achieve uh, this morning? Very good morning to you, Michelle. Well, they're hoping to achieve a situation where commuters can be able to commute in and around Cape Town, particularly in that B97 route, which you have mentioned. He will be assessing it in terms of the railway services, because uh, remember that uh, minibus taxi associations decided themselves to uh, suspend their services. This is now outside of the B97 route, which was closed following the Gazette by the MEC for Transport, Dalen Mitchell. They, as taxi associations, decided uh, on top of that to suspend their services as negotiations continued. But yesterday, the Minister of Transport, together with his counterpart, the MEC in the province, announcing that peace deal and subsequently taxi associations coming out to apologize to to commuters who have been affected during this ongoing taxi violence. Now, it is still important to mention that over 80 people have lost their lives during uh, the taxi violence here in the Western Cape from the beginning of the year. And so this comes at a time which is much needed for those who've been bearing the brunt and those who've been caught in the crossfire. It's interesting that uh, one of the taxi associations yesterday, Carter, mentioning how they've not only lost their operation the taxi drivers, you mentioned how uh, a taxi association in Belleville has lost about 6 million rands uh, in just a few weeks of the closure of this particular route. And, of course, this means that uh, they will now be back on the road given that they comply to the legal requirements of this agreement. I'm joined now by the minister. He's here uh, next to me. Thank you so much, minister, for your time. I see you are dressed readily uh, for the road to assess uh, the uh, situation with regards to Prasa and the trains that are on the rail this morning, particularly on this B97 route. Talk to us about what we are going to be doing today. Well, the first is to reassure the public that uh, very soon things will be getting back to normal and uh, uh, we have um, moved close to uh, a final resolution uh, that include also the B7 that is affected that route that we are in but equally to come and check uh, the Prasa readiness in terms of um, uh, the increase of uh, transport, uh, the trains, support on the ground, that's what we are here to check. Uh, because uh, when we impose uh, Section 91, uh, it means that uh, on the other hand, we need to increase means of public transport. Uh, a process has been... Uh, you know, challenged for the past couple of years. And uh, getting the trains back on the rails has not been easy, particularly in areas that have been affected. Uh, how difficult was it during this taxi violence period to get those trains on the rails as well as getting bus services on the road? You know, at some point there were limited bus services. How difficult has it been during these past few weeks of negotiations to get other modes of public transport going? Uh, look, uh, the engineers and everybody at Prasa do their best to get things going. But uh, remember, this to us is a part of our program of action to get things happening and to get the service back on track. So we are on track with regard to that. Uh, activities, uh, uh, albeit uh, abnormal, uh, help us to get our services faster and, uh, you know, with determination back on track. So uh, this is helping us to get the, the services. This is the service that uh, people uh, have got uh, to benefit from, uh, particularly uh, the workers uh, who commute uh, every day. Uh, this is their service. Uh, government invests billions in this. 
uh, the fact that it has been run down over the years is what we seek to recover and restore. Uh, now, Minister, run us through again that peace deal and what it took to get to this resolution. Uh, the peace deal guarantees the fact that, uh, one, there will be ceasefire and that uh, uh, taxes where uh, the routes are not affected will be back to normal and that uh, only legal operators will be back online and that the P97 remain closed up until the arbitration uh, makes a determination on what needs to happen. Uh, but uh, over and above that, uh, we have said that the arbitration needs to be expedited. The province will meet with the arbitrator uh, to engage on the fast-tracking fast that particular process. And then um, uh, over and above that, uh, what is important is the peace deal. And um, uh, the long-lasting solution is to resolve the root situation here and uh, counterbalance that with what is happening in terms of the ITPs uh, on the ground as we expand communities and all of that, it affects also the mode of transport. And how do we plan for that? And uh, uh, we need to also bring into action the moratorium that we need to impose on the issuing of, uh, you know, uh, route licenses and all of that to the operators as per the resolution of the Lekhotla. We need ourselves to expedite the implementation of those Lekhotla resolutions. But the peace deal that we have here is quite tight and uh, we are confident given the fact that everybody is on board, uh, we'll get uh, somewhere. So uh, uh, all the parties own the deal and uh, the province leads uh, in terms of this and we support. Thank you so much, Minister, for your time. Yesterday, the Minister of Transport, Figuli Mbalula, describing this peace deal as an epic move between the two warring taxi associations. Now, I'll leave it dear for now. Back to you in studio. Thanks very much for that. Atim Dungana is live to us. There's certainly great news for Western Cape community.